Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and to another installment in the Keweenaw and Scenic Valley Railroad build. That's right, after a few months of working on other projects, I am back up in Michigan to continue with this railroad build. There are a few maintenance items to take care of, and also the customer wants me to show him my scenery methods. So let's head into the train room behind me and get to work. We're heading into the client's train room. You can see there's a lot of cars and locomotives on the track because he has been using it. We have some action items on the maintenance list. Most of the rail joints across this section joint here are a little bit on the tight side and there's a few places where they've caused some buckling. Here's one here where this rail is buckled and it's also closed up that electrical gap so if we try to throw this turn out we get a dead short. And there's also a few over the other side. Those two tracks across that joint over the far side are badly buckled so we're going to have to cut pieces of rail out and then rejoin it. Here is a switch machine that I'm working on. It came unglued, so I'm just rebuilding it. And that will go back in again. And then lastly, there is a turnout over here where the throw bar has come unsoldered. But that's about it for the, um, for the maintenance items. The client has just realized he doesn't have a set of needle files, so he's run off to get some. And yes, I could have bought certain tools with me, but we decided against it because he really needs to have all the tools in his possession anyway. Well, it is the start of the second morning on this trip. And although yesterday we did fix most of the maintenance items, there's really not a lot to see until we get round to the other side of the railroad where we can see that I have installed the first 14 foot piece of backdrop. Yes, I know the backdrops were already painted sky blue. And I was not expecting the client to purchase photo backdrops, but he has. And I actually think they look quite nice. There's a lot of shadow showing through from the room lights. Those will go away once the scenery for the upper deck is filled in. So just ignore those. He actually had one piece of backdrop that would go all the way around the center diorama. But rather than try to install a 35 foot piece, we decided to cut it where it'll be, the joint will be virtually invisible on that side. You'll never be able to see that it's there. We both felt it would be a lot easier to experiment with a much shorter piece. Anyway, the client is out of town this morning. He had to go and do some errands. He had to go and meet up with somebody. So I'm just gonna get on with it by myself. So don't go away. I will check in with you again later. It is the start of day three. Let's go around the back and I'll show you what I did yesterday. I have been filling in foam contours in this area. Most of the day the client was out of town and left me to it. But he was here at the end of the day to finish this with me. So what I did is I just got a good head start. The tunnel portal and retaining wall is in. There is about six inches of track ballasted inside the tunnel. And there is a shaper sheet liner. If I put the camera in there, you might be able to see it. I'm not sure. This camera is too big and bulky to show inside. But I think you can see it. I had a couple of double stacks in the tunnel portal yesterday while I was working just to make sure that I had adequate clearance. You can see there's a cut across the pink foam. I shortened the airport base because I don't want to have the joint anywhere near the stream bed. And with the photo backdrop, we've got to make the stream come a little bit further out this way than I had in mind. 
so it's got to go behind a ridge. It would have been better if we could have had a gap in the corn, but we don't, so we're going to have to hide that. At least this hill here makes it look as though the stream could meander around it and across there in front of the farm. I think that will still be looking reasonable. And a dense clumping of trees will help to hide anything that doesn't look quite right. The first task for today is to get the blue foam shaped. So I'm going to turn the camera off, let's get on with that, and I will be right back. This morning we've got these landforms carved in the pink foam. I guess it's about a 10 foot area we're working on, 10 foot long by 2 foot wide. This flat area is going to stay as such for now because that's where he's putting his private airport. If you recall from the plans, there'll be a runway into that back alcove in, in force perspective. He has a couple of N-scale Cessnas that he'll put at the end of the runway. There'll be a low cut in front of it. A decent length fill either side of the, of the stream. And then the stream will go into a more rocky area. And then we've got to disguise the fact that the backdrop doesn't really work. Make it look as though the stream runs around the end of that ridge with the yellow crop, whatever it is, and in front of the farm. At this end, I've gone for a minimal hill just enough so the tunnel doesn't look out of place. And although I normally do all my rock work with carving, I am going to incorporate a couple of rock castings just so I can demonstrate to the customer the method of blending rock carving and castings together. The assumption at this point is that the tunnel just cuts through the end of a ridge so most of the hill is off behind it, and it was a much easier alignment than going around in front of the ridge. So that justifies the tunnel with minimal depth above it. Next thing to do is to get the backdrop masked off so we don't ruin it. Mask off all the track, and also put some plastic over this side where there are workbenches. This is just about a two by four offcut of OSB. Plywood would have been better because it's smoother, but this works, it's what he had. And I've screwed blocks down to the framing and then screwed this on top. So although it's close to track level, it's not actually resting on the track. So let me just turn the camera off and I will check in with you again later. I've taped plastic sheets around the plaster bench to protect all the track in the vicinity. And I've also masked off the backdrop with another piece of plastic and the track where we're going to be working with blue painter's tape. That's all the masking I'm going to do. Unless the customer insists, I'm not going to put plastic on the floor because it will be a lot easier to clean up any plaster drips than it will be to work with the plastic there. So once I've got all the tools and materials organized, it will be time to get sticky. Don't go away, I will check in with you again later. Well, that is all the rock carving done. It was only about six batches. It's after six o'clock, but I am going to continue just a little bit longer because I want to get the first wash coats on it. Start getting the colouring in so that has time to dry overnight and I can dry brush it in the morning. Next thing I'm going to do is peel the masking tape off the tunnel portal but I'm going to leave it on the track and then I will spray the, with the paint in one hand and the water in the other. Well this is what it looks like with the wash colours on. I just followed my standard procedure. Start with a black wash over everything and then do burnt umber on randomly just covering about half of it. It's actually been a couple of hours since I put it on. I've already done some staining of talus and tree trunks downstairs in the garage. So most of the excess moisture has already evaporated. By tomorrow morning it should be 
nice and dry so I can dry brush it. So I'm going to sign off for the day and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Don't go away. Well I've just finished dry brushing all the rock faces and put the paints away. I didn't do this little bit here because that is probably best done when the client is ready to continue the rest of the cutting along in front of the airport. That way doing the dry brushing all in one go will help to blend the colour in better. Well, I've spread two batches of sculptor mould. Before I continue, I want to cut this hump down a little bit. I think that needs to go down about half an inch where my fingers are. So I'm going to get the multi tool out and shave that before I mix another batch of sculptor mould. So let me do that and I'll be right back. I think that looks a lot better now. So I'm just going to mix more sculptor mould and continue. Well that is as much sculptor mould as I'm going to do today. I don't want to go over the start of the airport base because that hasn't been fully shaped yet. So I've just left the seam about an inch short. But everything else is done. We're now going to leave that to set up for a little bit while cleaning up the mess. And then we will come back and start on the dirt work. So don't go away. I'll check in with you again later. Well, with the sculptor mold finished and the mess cleaned up, I can now concentrate on the next step, which is to paint all the dirt areas with full strength white glue and then sprinkle sifted dirt on. About three quarters of the sculptor mold is dry enough to proceed. This area to the left of the stream and in front of the track is still a bit wet, so I'm going to do that last. I've got plenty of time to get on with the rest of it, and then I'll come back and finish that later. Well, that is about all we can do today. We have all the layers of ground cover on. All we can sensibly do now is leave the room and wait for the glue to dry. I'm not quite sure what day it is today, but it's the penultimate day of the project. And if you look at the scene now, I've done a lot of little painting tasks. I've got the plastic covering off the sky backdrop. I had to modify the backdrop in this area, put a gap in the cornfield where the river goes through. I have extended the tree line up over the top of our hills. I've also disguised a tear in the backdrop right in the middle of the camera now. That cloud right on the top edge that looks a little bit different from the others. That is my effort at hiding that great big stark white patch where we managed to tear it during installation. I've also hit the ties with a darker brown because the brown oxide spray paint that I use for track is too red. I've also finished the spackle job on the front edge of the fascia and painted the riverbed where we've got the deep creek under the bridge, black in the middle, fading to brown at the edge. I had to put more glue in the stream bed because that talus wasn't stuck. So I can't get the river poured until tomorrow. Fortunately, I do have the extra day. This area around the back was never going to be a good match, but it will be hidden under dense trees. So I just wanted to make sure that I've got a really dark green in there. So on the off chance that some of it can be seen through, it still looks right. Originally that landscape was about two inches higher there, but my client did not want to hide the farm. So we wanted to make sure we had plenty of depth available to put a whole row of trees in there without hiding the farm buildings. So that is why we have the mismatched banks. The next step on this project is to ballast the track. And that will be a task for this afternoon. We can just go get some lunch now and then I'll be right back. Don't go away. Well, I spent a couple of hours this morning planting trees with the client. We were struggling in that we didn't really have enough variety of deciduous trees to get very far. 
There are a few plastic Menards trees hidden in that. I added some highlights with some flocking material using the same methods that I did for the other trees and we can barely see them now. So they help to add bulk to the area at very little time and expense. The customer found them on sale dirt cheap. The idea is to start with a dense clump over the tunnel to disguise the fact that it's very close to the backdrop and then get further apart, more sparser in this area and another solid clump down where the stream disappears into the backdrop to hide that area. And over the front side, the idea is to have some, is to have a few larger deciduous trees positioned such that we can see under the canopy. And he wants to build a scene with some campers and four-wheelers in there. Next task is to pour the river or stream. And with that in mind, I have installed a masking tape dam and clamped a piece of plywood over it just to make sure the dam stays in place. I vacuumed all the debris out of the stream bed earlier and we are now ready to mix the resin and pour it. Well, that's all we have time for on this trip. I have to leave in a few hours to catch my flight home. Customer's very happy with the progress, and I think I am too. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you again next week. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.